Okay, so this is probably going to be among the most important videos I ever make. Only the strong are going to survive what's about to happen. What is the bedrock of all strength? What is the bedrock of all strength? That is the question. I'm going to tell you how you can master your domain today simply and it all comes down to a few words that you can say to yourself. I'm going to share a piece of advice with you today that I hope carries you through the dark times. Understand that if I die tomorrow I can be happy knowing that this video is going to resonate with people for years to come because it's that important that people understand this. The enemy of strength is overindulgence, okay? The bedrock of all strength is your ability to manage your innermost desires, pleasure. Manage your seeking of pleasure. Manage your hedonism. That is the bedrock of all strength in a society that is completely rife with all manner of distractions. How do you quit bad habits is what it's all going to boil down to. How can you stop doing the things that bring you short-term pleasure but long-term pain? And it's simple. It is simple if you have the motivation to do it. And I'm going to tell you it starts with two words. It starts with two words. Understand that if you cannot control your impulses and if you cannot gain a mastery of temperance, if you don't have temperance, if you don't have sobriety of thought and sobriety of body, then you're already at a disadvantage when it comes to surviving an adverse set of circumstances like the one that awaits us all. We are in the death throes of this financial system. We are in the death throes of this geopolitical paradigm. The whole thing is about to collapse. And because this society has bred so many weak-minded people, because it's provided us with so many creature comforts, the greatest gift you can give anyone right now, the greatest gift you can give your children is to push them out of their comfort zone, is to make them struggle. That's the most beautiful gift you can give everyone. Put that under the Christmas tree, a lump of coal. That's the greatest gift you can give someone if you know that hard times are ahead. As times get more difficult, the temptations are only going to increase. There's going to be more drugs. There's going to be more virtual distractions. There's going to be more instant methods of gratification that present themselves to take away the pain, but they're only going to make your life worse as it goes on. And if you are addicted to any substance or behavior, a process addiction or a chemical dependency, if you're going into a shit hit the fan situation and you're an addict, you're done. You are done. But I'm here to tell you that there's a simple solution. And not only that, you can convert that energy into something incredibly powerful. If you are an addict going into shit hits the fan, you are going to be putting yourself in high risk situations to get your fix. You're going to be partaking in all manner of irrational behavior. You're going to have a distorted hierarchy of what's important and prioritizing your needs. You're going to be putting things that don't necessarily you need before things that you actually do need, you and your family need in order to survive. You're going to resort to doing things that you probably ought not do. Your moral compass is going to be completely uncalibrated and it's going to bring you misfortune. It is going to cause you to do things that you know are wrong when times get hard. Now I'm going to tell you how you can quit any bad habit simply. And you see what I just said there? how you can quit any bad habit. That is the problem right there. This is what a lot of people struggle with. And this, this is the gist of this video. Okay. I'm going to give it to you. Stop saying I'm going to quit bad things. You don't quit 
bad things. The word quit in itself is negative. Think about it. You quit your job. You quit school. You usually quit things that are good. And so quit is a negative thing. It's a negative word. When you use that word, it denotes failure. It elicits feelings about yourself that are negative, inherently negative. So when you say, I'm going to quit smoking, immediately your brain is thinking, oh, this sucks. I have to quit something because quitting is not good. Quitting is inherently a bad word. Typically, you need to start saying, I'm starting. I'm going to start being a non-smoker. I'm going to start not being addicted to whatever manner of process addiction is holding you back in life. I'm going to start being a non-drinker. I'm going to start being a non-user of substances. I'm going to start. That's what you have to tell yourself. Not I'm going to quit. Oh, I'm trying to quit. No, if you're saying, if you're telling yourself you're trying to quit something, you're already fucked up. You're done. You're going to go back to it. You know, it's only a matter of time. Because in your mind, you think you're at a loss. And that's the problem. That's the deception. The truth of the matter is, whenever you stop a bad habit, you gain so much. All you do is you, you gain the world when you stop anything which is counterproductive to your survival. You gain the world. Yet in your mind, because you're an addicted mind, you've convinced yourself that you're losing something. Okay. When the reality is, is that the benefits, there is no possible benefit to continuing down the road you're on, but there's a thousand wonderful things that are going to come of you stopping that thing and starting something new. This seems so simple, doesn't it? It's called cognitive behavioral therapy. It's a simple way of shaping and framing your perspective with the use of words. And it's incredible how much just a simple word sometimes, a simple word can carry people through those dark times. You know, I have a little mantra that I tell myself when times get really hard and I want to give up and I think that everything is just collapsing all around me. I tell myself, don't think, just do. Because nine times out of a 10, you are far more capable than your anxieties will permit. The human body can endure so much pain, so much suffering, so much struggle. But we shortchange ourselves in terms of getting the exercise we need, the mental exercise. Just like you go to the gym or you exercise and physically work out and you break down those muscle tissues so that they can grow back bigger and stronger, the same thing happens, has to happen to your mind. You have to be putting yourself in precarious situations in the sense that you're not gratifying your needs as instantly as they arise. This is temperance. This is the opposite of gluttony. This is self-mastery. This is self-discipline. The foundation of all strength and power in the world is your ability to abstain from that which will kill you. To a certain extent. Obviously, there's everything in moderation. The problem is most people who are addicted to things that are killing them, well, there's a reason for that <laughs> that we might not be able to get into in this video, but starting. I'm not quitting smoking. I'm starting to be a non-smoker. Why are you starting to be a non-smoker? Because there's a thousand benefits. If you're a smoker and we go Mad Max, what sort of Dumbass, irrational things are you going to do to get a cigarette? And I know this sounds crazy, but addiction is powerful. What sort of dumbass things are you going to do to feed your addiction when people are just struggling to survive day to day, struggling to find something to eat? You don't think you'll do something stupid now. You say, oh, I'm, I'll rise to the occasion. I'll make sure that, you know, when the time comes, I'll do what it takes. To take care of me and my family. No, you won't. Nope. You'll die just like 
95 billion human beings have died before. So if you're serious about survival, you absolutely need to say, I'm starting a new way of doing things. I'm going to start living healthy because it's beneficial. Not, oh, I'm going to quit. I got to quit eating McDonald's. I, I should quit. Yeah. You know, because right away, immediately you, you, you trick your mind into thinking you're at a loss when you say quit. No, you're not quitting. You're starting to live pure. You're starting to live clean. You're starting to live strong. You're starting to have all of the vitamins and minerals you need to formulate the thoughts and engage in the high level analytical thinking that you're going to have to use to get out of very dangerous situations or to excel while the grid is up. Remember the 100 to 1 rule? It's 100 times easier to do anything now. No matter how hard you think life is, getting by on minimum wage and you know just trying to keep pace with inflation, no matter how hard you think that is, just wait until World War III goes full swing. If you think it's hard now, wait till they bust out the ration cards. You need to seize every moment right now to maximize yourself, okay? To max out. And you do that with temperance. You do that with self-discipline. Avoiding overindulgence. And you enjoy it. You love it. We've been tricked. We've been tricked into getting that short-term appeasement of our desires at the expense of developing the strength to endure hard times. That's why we're so weak, we're so soft, because we can always take the easy way out. Even hard people, even tough people, you know, people who live in the country nowadays, you know, a, a lot of them, they've acquiesced to the, to the luxuries and amenities of, of life. And they're soft in many ways that even they might not contemplate it even though they know how to fix a this or a that or they can you know grow their own food and this and that we, we're still mentally soft in so many ways but one thing i want to tell you is that if you are a person who struggles with addiction like most people in society most people are addicts on some level everybody has to have that thing that they're obsessed with but there's something about hardcore addicts the ones that are truly obsessed with whatever it is that is destroying them. Because oftentimes it's a certain tenacity. There's an energy to that obsessiveness that only the addict knows. They're willing to put themselves in all types of precarious situations in order to get their fix. Well, think about the energy of that. Think about the dedication, the motivation. Think if you transmuted that into something constructive. It's like addicts are running on nuclear power and if to get their fix and everyone else, I mean, people I'd say what you want about people on Hastings and people who are, you know, under the spell of crack cocaine and methamphetamine and all manner of other uppers and downers and all arounders. But there's a certain dedication there, an unrelenting drive to get that fix. It's called the death instinct. That's what Sigmund Freud thought it was. Thanatos. It's a strive towards self-destruction. Typically, historically, this drive was there for the warriors so that they would throw themselves into war so that their tribe would benefit. Now it's just destroying ourselves. But think if you can flip it. Think if you can flip that obsession, that tenacity, that unrelenting commitment and drive towards trying to get what it is you are pursuing push that into something constructive and you will completely amaze yourself with what you can accomplish. But first, you have to reframe it. You're starting a new life. You're starting a new life. It's not about quitting smoking. It's not about quitting playing video games too much. It's not about quitting pornography. It's not about quitting... Uh, being promiscuous. It's not about quitting all of manner of drugs and alcohol, whatever distractions that the grid is throwing at us nowadays. It's about starting life without those things. 
and understanding how enriching a life it is truly going to be. Alan Carr, the guy who wrote the book, The Easy Way to Quit Smoking, it's a great book, but the fundamental flaw is in the title. You don't quit smoking. You start being a non-smoker. You quit things that are good. That's, the, that's what it denotes. Quitting is a, is a negative term. So why would you use a negative term for something that you're going to do for positive? Now, this seems silly. It does. It seems like, well, what do you mean? Just a word? Well, ha is, hasn't there been a word that somebody told you in your life that just resonates since the time they told you it 10, 20 years ago? The power of words, man. The power of just, you know, that one thing, that one older, wiser person told you that one time. And that has stuck with you and that has carried you through so many moments where you wanted to give up. It is that simple. It is the power of words. The power of just something so small, just a mantra. It comes down to a mantra that you have to have. And the mantra that you need in order to get your shit together while you still can is I'm starting to live. Not just because I want to live forever. Not just because I want to procreate and make lots of kids. But because I want to have a higher quality of life. I don't believe in work-life balance, okay? Because especially for people who are addicts, who people who are obsessed with something, there's no such thing as work-life balance. And arguably, you know, I like the Bukowski view, uh, you know, find what you love and let it kill you, but not if it's self-destructive, okay? You can take the Bukowski uh, approach and you can accomplish nothing for you and your friends and your family, or you can take the Bukowski approach and be like Einstein. You can be like those people who converted that what would be destructive energy into something incredibly powerful. Everything that drives the greatest champions in the world, the people who make those breakthroughs and discoveries at 4.30 in the morning on a Tuesday, you know, the people that what drives them through the night, what drives that obsession is the same thing that drives people to self-destruction. It's just one person is flipping it into something, converting it, catharting it, whatever you want to call it, into something constructive. The other person has turned it inward. They've turned that energy inward. Addicts are warriors, I believe. Of days gone by, many addicts probably would have given their lives in war because that death instinct is there for a reason that's the instinct to sacrifice oneself for the tribe it's powerful now i understand that right now people are confused because right now as the saying goes we are primitive beings prehistoric beings living under medieval institutions with godlike technology and the type of neurosis and neurotic behavior that emerges from that while we're seeing it manifest everywhere just look around i mean every possible aberration social cultural aberration is the result of this disconnect between the fact that, and you can even look at it through our different parts of our brain if you want to be neuroscientific about it. You could look at the brain stem, which is like the reptilian brain. And then you have the mammalian brain, which is the amygdala, the emotional part. Okay, the reptile is the, you know, the reptile is, is, is what just gets what it wants right now. The amygdala, the emotional component, is something which is distinctly mammalian. You know, elephants have it, dolphins have it, dogs have it. It's the emotional component, right? And that is the institutional component, if you will. The technology is the cerebellum. That's the cerebral cortex. That's the forethought, the ability to have abstract thoughts. These three components of the human brain 
just simply don't know how to function in today's world of, of uh, incredible technology, distorted institutions that are archaic and outdated and don't map on to the current world as is. And this is why the whole thing is doomed to collapse. Because we are prehistoric beings living under medieval, archaic institutions with godlike technology. Ultimately, the whole system has to collapse. It's going to collapse in terms of conflict, climactic issues, contagion, collapse of the financial system. <sighs> and so we are up against a state of the world that we are not naturally accustomed to. People don't realize it, but 99% of what you do is fueled by you know, very, very primitive drives. I mean, you might think that you're different from that monkey in that cage in the zoo, but you're not. You're driven by the exact same drives. You just have godlike technology and medieval institutions directing you where to go. And it causes confusion. That's why we see all these crazy school shooters. That's why nobody knows what they want to be. You know, that's why everybody is so brainwashed and why nobody can really seem to ascertain what's what, what's real. We're so far f removed. Because this is all new. This is all relative. This is all in the last hundred years. This whole experience. And it's only going to get worse as we dive into the metaverse. That is, if we don't get tripped up on our way there by some major war that it appears is shaping up. You need to be the strongest person you can be. And the, the cornerstone of all strength, my friends, is your ability to be temperate. Your ability to control what you put in your body and what you put in your mind. So, all I can say is that if you can do this, if you can have a mantra when you're feeling weak, a mantra. A mantra is what you need. You need a go word. And if you're a person who struggles with anxiety, you can do this as well. You can train yourself to become active with a go word, just like a dog. You know, when, uh, and people are, oh, I'm not a dog. Yeah, you are. Everybody's just like a dog. Classic conditioning, we all succumb to the same Pavlovian type uh, methods as, you know, any animal out there. The pigeons that peck whatever for whatever, the mouse that gets the cheese, that, that's what we are, by and large. You think you aren't, but uh, you are. And the people who market and really run the world and understand the, the realm of marketing and, and finance understand that. The mantra is the most important thing. Having a, having a go word. Conditioning yourself. When you're doing some sort of peak physical activity where you are really amped up, like you're going for a run or you're... Repeat the go word in your head. Maybe it's, um, I don't know, groovy. I, I, I don't know. Any word comes to mind. Lightning comes to mind. Your mind will start to associate that with that physiological state that you're in. Okay? And in repeating that mantra in t when times get tough, or if you need to, to focus, if you need total clarity in that moment, and you need to be totally mindful of your surroundings, lightning. <sighs> this can work. It can work not only for controlling your impulse control. Um, it can also work for training yourself to manage anxiety. It can work to training yourself to bring out aggression when it needs to be brought out. A lot of people, that's how they train dogs, you know, with those words. The dog knows, and everything in that dog's being is physically, physiologically activated to become aggressive when it hears that command. The same thing is with humans. So when you're going to the range and you're training and you're, you know, you're running these drills, just say that word in your head, okay? And then it's just going to be a little bit easier for you to get in that mode because right away, that whole schemata 
is going to be pulled up by your brain, you know, okay, so lightning, oh, okay, yeah, we're in that mode now all of a sudden. It brings you back to that, brings you back to something that you know. It's no, it, it's not something that um, you can replace training with, but it is something that can help. So that's what I got for you today, guys. I, I would hope that you would try this technique if you are struggling to stop bad habits and you want to start something new. Try this technique. I have a feeling that it is going to help you out. And I just hope that people... If there's anything you can take from this, just understand the power of subvocal subvocalization in terms of affecting your goals in life. Because it really is, you're having that conversation with yourself 24-7, and you just got to insert the right words at the right times, and that's going to take you where you want to go. Okay? Now, I think that's all I really wanted to say today, I probably could have said that in a minute, but I feel as though this is such an important topic that people need to hear it again and again because it's so incredibly powerful. And again, I want you to think back to your life, somebody who told you something that affected you in a certain way. Why is that the case? Why is it that that one word that bounces off the, the insides of your brain Whenever a certain situation arises, why does that memory come to mind? That's the power of words. So use this to your advantage. Get your shit together while the getting is good. Because I don't think things are going to get better before they get a lot worse. But understand also that that is a blessing. Austerity is a blessing for people who have lost their instincts because they've just been they've been bred out of them they've been there's no need for instincts anymore you know everything is dictated everything is dictated in what i call the concrete matrix and yes i've been using that term long before andrew tate the concrete matrix i made a video about this many years ago and the concrete matrix is the distortion that happens when civilization is imposed on a primate like ourselves straight lines you know in nature everything is curved everything is fluent we impose this orthogonal world on the minds of the apes that we are and people don't know what to do with that it, it's it's you know it's stop go you know everything is directed you're given directions directions well there was a time when you were just free flowing through the jungle you thought for yourself on a whim there was no rules and as we descend into darker times that type of instinctive thinking as the grid starts to collapse this concrete matrix that's been imposed on the world as it starts to break down and crumble and deteriorate that's when your ability to evoke those instincts is going to be all the more important that's in your ability to think on the fly and be in tune with what you've naturally been endowed with throughout tens of thousands of years of evolution. Those things, that thing that's deeply embedded deep within our genetic code, that's what's going to keep us alive. That's what's going to matter. Okay, I'm not saying that we completely throw all of uh, the attributes that we've gained from living in this more sophisticated societal network we don't just dispose of it all and we don't uh, underestimate it either because there are benefits there are benefits to knowing how to navigate a city you know but it's a different set of motor skills it's going to be different when there's less rules and a lot of people who've been conditioned to follow rule after rule after rule all they know is Go here, go there, go there. Thinking for yourself is, you know, there's this, it's kind of cliche and it's a bit of a truism to say, yeah, you know, you need to think for yourself, but the more regimented and the more laws and the more 
organized and complex society becomes, necessarily you have to offload a lot of that to the grid. You know, like you don't think, you know, I don't have to think about how to cook my food. I push a button on the microwave. I don't think about, have to think about the directions to get to work because I use the GPS. You know, I don't think about how I'm going to write this letter because it's the only one I'm going to be able to send this week to this person who lives across the world because I can just phone them or text them right now or DM them, right? So the grid makes it so that you don't have to think on, so that you don't have to innovate on the spot. These micro innovations that's required with a more instinctive manner of engaging with the world. Anyways, I'm just kind of going off now. <laughs> I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say here, guys. Just reframe. Use that word. It's starting. It's not quitting. You need to start a new life while you still can. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.